Hello, welcome to Bugs in My Backyard podcast. Uh, or, I'm sorry, yeah, Bugs in My Backyard. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> this is episode five, and uh, this week uh, I'm Jonathan, and this is Bennett. And uh, this week uh, we're actually we didn't pick an insect of the week again because uh, I had some things come in the mail, and I just thought it'd be fun to talk about something we do where we have the outdoor backyard jungle. But we also have the indoor indoor backyard in that inside jungle that sometimes mommy's not real thrilled with. But we're gonna talk mm-hmm. about <laughs> be careful. We're gonna talk about insect pets, and uh, we actually keep a few insect pets. Uh, and so we're gonna talk about what we have, and then we're gonna give you some tips on pets for yourself. So Bennett, why do we keep insect pets? Why do you think? Uh, because the. Fun? Yeah, they're fun. So they're still different. They they don't invade your life quite as much as the big pets. <laughs> oh, there's mother of the house just made a cameo appearance in our podcast. Um, well, one reason I do it is because of this. What what am I doing in that picture? Uh, there's Bennett. me. Yeah, you're up there. What am I doing in that picture? Are uh, you teaching little kids about bugs? Yeah. And we have bugs there. And yep. We have dead bugs there, and we already showed them the. Yeah, so sometimes I do presentations for kids about insects, and I love it when I can bring insects with me to show them because it makes them more real. So uh, let's quickly go through our our insect pets here. Um, Well, first of all, I'm going to show some that we don't have right now, but we usually have in the summer. Um, Here, be careful with that. So we usually bring in caterpillars. Yeah, that's a picture of Henry looking at caterpillars in jars. No, they weren't caterpillars. They were chrysalises. And then when we chrysalis. Well, they, they started as caterpillars, right? Yeah. So we, we keep caterpillars. Um, a couple other things we do. Let's see here. We Oh, and here's a picture of Bennett when he was a little more little Worse. looking at a uh, caterpillar. <gasps> oh! Whoa. Yeah. So... Worse. It's a I black swallowtail, I think. I couldn't. You had it for but we also do something, or we keep some other pets. So I'm going to go through um, a few of them right now. So. We have to. Right now. Yeah, well, let's show, let's show oh. them. Okay, so we here's some pets we have right now. And actually, I'm going to do this one first because it keeps wanting to dig back to the bottom. So this one's kind of kind of gruesome for some people. They may not. Mm-hmm. They may think it's kind of gross. Okay, some people may not like this one. Well, it's not bad, but it just looks kind of gross. So this is the grub, the larva of a type of scarab beetle called a rhinoceros beetle. Really big beetle with a horn on it. Very cool insect. Really excited for when this becomes an adult. It'll be in this uh, in this dirt for quite a long time until it uh, pupates and becomes an adult. Uh, that's something that's going to be a lot of fun to have and take to our insect presentations. Uh, let me track down here a picture of it so folks can see what what it'll turn into. So it turns into that someday. Whoa, that's, so that, that's pretty cool. So I just have to keep it in this dirt and, and you keep it... it. You it. Yeah, it's but it's huge. No. And you know the funny thing about grubs? See, grubs turn into scarab beetles. So sometimes scarab beetles are things people don't want in their yard. But you know what? You know how you tell the difference between a scarab beetle when it's just a grub? Why? Its size and its Shake. its butt. Oh. Huh. Oh, yeah. They all have different butts. So if you really want to look at the butt of a scarab beetle or, or a grub, you can tell right. The butt is see-through, see? Here are a few of the other insects we got in. This is a harlequin beetle, also a type of scarab beetle from the American Southwest, from what I understand. It feeds on primarily fruit. We're going to feed it some fruit cup, jello fruit cups, really easy to take care of. This is a death feigning beetle. We've had several of these for the past couple years. They lived a long time. Very easy to take care of. Also really good for our insect presentations. 
because you can see the parts of the beetle very clearly when you're trying to show what an insect looks like. Again, another easy one to take care of. And then these are uh, baby, they're nymph praying mantises, really early in their life. Uh, we've had praying mantises that have grown to adulthood in the past. They've since passed on, lived their life. Now we've got some new ones. They uh, are, take a little more work because you have to feed them flies, but it's amazing. Just give them time. Slowly they'll molt uh, and grow to their adult size, usually five or six inches or so. Those are a few of our insect pets. And uh, let's see what else we have for pictures to show people here. Um, here's Bennett holding one of our past insect pets. This is, uh, this is, was our, um, no, that was the, um, ghost. Yeah, ghost mantis. That was mine. It was on his arm. So, they're, they're, prances are pretty easy to take care of. Here's one that, um, lived for a long time oh, yeah. and just recently passed on. And became uh, fat. Giant. Well, that's because she had she had babies. Yeah. A giant African mantis, I think it was called, yeah. and so that mantis got about I don't know. What about the five blue inches one? long? What about the blue one? The blue one? Yeah, the one that started out blue. Oh wait, it was that here. One. Here's the dead leaf mantis. So we have a, a a baby dead leaf mantis. Here is a picture of one we had before when it was uh, the previous one we have. Look at the look at the um Whoa. over the top of the. Thorax. Look at the eyes. I can't even see the part, like the partings from the body. Mm. So that's pretty, pretty insect. Oh, wait. And then this so, is uh, another one we had that, that lived for a while and we don't have any more, but this is a uh, spiny <gasps> flower mantis. That was super, super tiny when I took that picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So those are some of our pets. Uh, we really enjoy them. They have We have fun with them. Uh, they take some work. Just, you just have to make sure they're fed, but um, they're uh, fun. So here, here's the deal. Now we're gonna talk quick, really quick about you want an insect pet, okay? Yeah. You know, um, you can go to uh, the website I got mine from. It's called Bugs in Cyberspace. Bugs in Cyberspace. It's really great site, and so you can get some of the really easy ones, like these beetles I showed you, yeah. are really easy to take care of. So if you want some insect pets. These beetles are probably the very easiest. And I should say the death fainting beetle right here. He's death. Death. Just kidding. Death fainting beetle. It's because it acts dead when it gets disturbed. So, um, which a lot of this insects do. This guy does do. too. Yeah, the harlequin beetle. So, okay. So, number one, Bennett and Henry is off to the side. Oh, you can. If you want to have an insect pet, my number one piece of advice, like bring one from outside. A lot, most people want to bring it from outside. And my number one advice is observe. Go out and observe the insect. Don't just go outside one day and, oh, there's an insect. Oh, I want to bring it inside. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. You, you want to know what you're collecting, what it's going to look like, how it lives. Don't just, don't just be your first impulse to bring it inside because that's often not good for the insect. Um, and think if you were just suddenly taken out of your home and put somewhere that's not comfortable or scary. So... Um, it's not really a good way to have an insect, and it's probably not good for the insect. So take time. Your first instinct should not be just taken inside. Okay, right. No. So what's your second step, Bennett? If you you want to prepare, prepare. <laughs> right. We want to prepare because when you bring it inside, you want to make sure it can survive, and that's very important. So. It's not just as simple of having a jar and having a stick in it. You got it. What's what do you think the most important thing is about an insect if you want to keep it as a pet? Food and water. Yes. How are you going to feed it? Do you know what it likes to eat? Do you have easy access to get its food? Because just like any pet, you're going to have to feed it quite regularly and you're going to need to know um, uh, how to do that. So that's part of the observation. Once you've observed, now you prepare to bring it in. Another thing too, it's habitat. Um, where are you going to put it? Uh, I've accidentally put glass jars with insects too close to the sun and it gets really hot and an insect can't handle that. 
it can kill them. So you need to know that. Do they need some kind of surface on the bottom? Humidity is really important. Sometimes it can be really dry in our houses, and insects need humid air so they don't die. Like the praying mantises, for example, they need humidity. Um, they need humidity uh, so they can molt when as they get older. So, uh, and then uh, last thing I would say about keeping an insect pet is don't neglect it. So it's just like any pet. Like the dog might bark at you to, to remind you that that he or she wants water and food. The insect may not, but they need food and water just like you. And it doesn't take very long to feed them usually. Um, our praying mantises, they just want some flies. So we get little flies and we knock them in their, in their cage. But you got to do it. So just like having any pet. So observe, go outside, um, see their surroundings, understand who they are before you bring them in. Prepare for it. How are you going to get their food? Do you know what they're going to do? You know how that you're going to take care of them? Where are they going to live? And then lastly, um, don't neglect them. So um, that's it. We'll let you go. Hope you enjoyed seeing some of our insect pets. Um, are we are. I did want. To, okay, I will give Ben a hard time. I want to do the feature, the Pokemon insects. No. But they don't want to do it. So if you want to see insect Pokemon. Comment on our video and tell Bennett and Samuel no. that you want to pick out insect Pokemon. Mm. And maybe they'll do it. No. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Bye.